Yes, you're reading that correctly. The recommended GPUs for Plague Tale Requiem, a game that's less concerned about, you know, supporting old consoles, things like that, is a RTX 3070 and an RX 6800 XT. And that is for 60 FPS at 1080p. Yes, they're recommending those GPUs for 60 FPS, 1080p. Now, also, it's kind of odd to see a 3070 paired against a 6800 XT. In general, the 6800 XT is going to be vastly more powerful than an RTX 3070, unless we're talking about ray tracing, which means I think we've figured out what's going on here. I think that this 1080p uh, ultra setting mode here probably has ray tracing enabled. We have been confirmed that this game does feature ray tracing. So even though most games, when they list their system requirements, kind of give out a separate recommendation for ray tracing or make it clear if their recommendation does involve ray tracing, I think the only realistic explanation for this uh, is that this involves ray tracing. Unless these are just the most incredible rasterized demanding uh, stuff that we've ever seen, and it's also factoring in using DLSS or something like that on the 3070. Because on that note, I will mention that um, on NVIDIA's uh, release uh, where they uh, gave 35 games and apps pledged to support NVIDIA's new DLSS 3, you will note that a Plague Tale Requiem is listed on that list. So this should be featuring DLSS 3. Now, if you've heard that, oh no, you know, the, the older uh, NVIDIA RTX cards, the 2000 series and 3000 series don't support DLSS 3. Well, DLSS 3 isn't really DLSS 3. It's DLSS 2 plus reflex plus a, an, a frame generation feature that you can toggle on and off. The frame generation feature is what's DLSS 3 um, and is exclusive to the newer GPUs. So if it supports DLSS 3, it should also support the DLSS 2 as well, the normal super resolution feature. So I think you should be good to go uh, on your older hardware. It won't, just won't feature the frame generation. Now, I have not been able to find any word on whether this will support FSR, but if it doesn't, we have seen a lot of games with DLSS support get FSR2 at least modded into them, which is better than nothing. It would be nice if we see some actual FSR support that just isn't being marketed if they have any kind of relationship with NVIDIA, perhaps, that kind of a thing. Anyway, now, the good news is that if you drop down to the minimum requirements for the game, it's a lot more reasonable. We're seeing a GTX 970 and a Radeon RX 590. Now, I'll get into how powerful these are relative to other GPUs and all that in just a second, but I do want to mention an interesting thing I noticed, which is that the minimum requirements for Plague Tale Requiem are pretty much identical to the recommended requirements for Plague Tale Innocence. To keep in mind that what I'm showing you right now is for the previous game in the series, where you see the uh, four gigabyte graphics cards with the GTX 970 Radeon. Uh, it has an RX 480 on this one rather than the 590, but it has the same NVIDIA GPU and I believe the same CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM as well. So in other words, the previous game's recommended requirements are now dropping down to the new game's minimum requirements. And the minimum requirements are telling us 30 frames per second at 1080p in low settings. So the good news is it looks like this game is gonna still work on some older hardware, although do keep in mind they say that you do require DirectX 12 level 12 and shader model 6.0 uh, as a requ minimum requirement. So the game uh, wouldn't run on, on GPUs that did not support that according to these specs. And, um, you know, the GTX 970, if we look at this relative to just, you know, other GPUs, if you have an, a GPU that's a bit weaker than this, first of all, I'll mention this is a relative performance chart from Tech Power Up, and it's fairly accurate, but on a game-by-game -game basis, and especially on older GPUs, sometimes this isn't super accurate just due to the fact that older GPUs will often underperform on newer graphics APIs and games that are, uh, you know, it's really just not gonna get the driver optimizations that newer GPUs would and that kind of a thing. So for example, a GTX 1650 being a lot newer, while it might be weaker overall, um, perhaps it would run a newer DirectX 12 version, you know, a bit faster than, than the average performance would indicate. 
I'm just saying, right, like, like little details like that could, uh, could factor into the performance here, like an RX 6400 on average being a little bit slower, but maybe would run the newer uh, API better, that kind of a thing. Anyway, the, um, G the GTX 1060 is still incredibly popular and does beat that minimum requirement, although not by much. So questions on could you hit 60 FPS in this game? Maybe you'd require some upscaling. We'll see. Um, the uh, RX 590 that they're listing for the AMD GPU is generally a bit faster on average than the 970, but these aren't like, you know, again, older GPUs, driver optimizations, newer APIs, these aren't completely out of the realm of, of a reasonable comparison here. And also, uh, putting two GPUs next to each other in a, in a system requirements li li list like this does not necessarily mean they're gonna give you identical performance. It might just be what they had on hand for testing older, older systems. And that when they list 30 FPS here, they're not saying these GPUs will give you a 30 FPS average. They're, not a, they're also not telling you it will give you a 30 FPS minimum. Usually system requirements charts either tell you 30 FPS or 60 FPS. And what 30 FPS means is you're definitely not going to be able to get 60 FPS average. Um, and so they call things below 60 FPS, 30 FPS, when in reality, maybe you're bouncing between 30 and 45, depending on the scene. You know what I mean? It's that kind of a thing. So don't read too much into those exact numbers. Anyway, if you're finding your own GPU on this list, you know, a 1660 is more powerful than their, their GTX 970 recommendation. A 1660 Super is quite a bit more powerful. GTX 1070 is in there. Your RTX 3050 is, you know, almost 50% faster. And again, in newer APIs like DX12, it might even have a larger advantage, that kind of a thing. So um, I would be expecting these more reasonable uh, GPUs, RTX 2060, RX 6600, things like that. Uh, right, RX 6600 is now basically double the performance of that lower end card. So I would be expecting to get at least 60 FPS at low, but given the advantages in uh, probably newer APIs like DX12, things like that, um, along with the fact that, like I said, this probably wasn't like a locked 30 FPS or anything. Uh, I would expect those GPUs to actually be able to go up to, you know, maybe medium settings, but we'll find out. This might be an uh, interesting game to benchmark. Now, if we want to talk a bit about some of the other requirements, the minimum memory requirement is listed at 16 gigabytes. A lot of games are still down at 8 or 12 on the minimum, and this one is listing 16. Um, and the CPUs are actually pretty old, so this shouldn't be too big of a deal for the minimums. But again, minimums aren't guaranteeing you 60 FPS. Um, and this is an i5-4690K or an FX8300. Uh, if you want some details on those, the, uh, sorry, the uh, 4690K is a four core, four thread CPU. So four cores, four threads, no hyper threading. And this is from June of 2014. So this is a pretty old chip from Intel and the AMD processor they're listing is the FX8300, which was eight core, eight thread. But if I remember correctly, although this was kind of before the time where I paid super close attention to this stuff, um, I don't think those were really like full blown eight cores. I think there was some kind of weird overlap thing happening there. Anyway, but those, those were from 2012. So these chips are not uh, asking a lot from your system for the minimum requirements. Although if we look at the CPUs for the recommended requirements, we're jumping up to an 8700K or a Ryzen 5 3600. These are much more modern and much more powerful CPUs to give you that 60 FPS with ray tracing and ray tracing, like I'm assuming it's ray tracing. Like I said, these make sense if this is including ray tracing. Other than that, those don't make a lot of sense. Ray tracing does, in, uh, does increase the workload on the CPU not just the GPU. So I would imagine if you're not using ray tracing, you can actually get by with less powerful CPUs here, which is important to note. The 8700K is a six core 12 thread CPU uh, from 2017. So within the last, you know, five years or so. And the Ryzen 5 3600 is a six core 12 thread CPU uh, from 2019, so it's a bit newer. But again, um, back before we got to the 5000 series of Ryzen's, Intel usually had the gaming performance lead. Um, so keep that in mind when you're kind of comparing that. Yes, this is a bit older, but you know, uh, it took uh, AMD a, a while to get that gaming performance up to snuff. 
Anyway, so interesting stuff on here. I don't want to ramble on too long other than saying, okay, what if you wanted to play at 1440p, that kind of a thing. Well, assuming that this is, a, this is talking about ray tracing but without upscaling, uh, which is what kind of would make sense to me here, then this would, um, I think, also work just fine at 1440p with upscaling, right, using DLSS. And then I think to go up to 4K, well, you know, 1080p upscaled to 4K is DLSS performance mode, although it takes a bigger hit than that, um, so it wouldn't quite match that performance. So in other words, I think you might want a stronger GPU, and then if you don't want to be uh, upscaling like crazy with ray tracing on, yeah, I think you'd want to be really maxing out the really high-end hardware if you're maxing this game out at 4K for sure. Um, but it looks like without, like I said, without ray tracing on, we can't tell from this exactly where you'll be, but the minimums weren't too bad. So if you want to kind of scroll through here again, um, uh, to kind of look at the relative performance here, the RTX 3070, uh, where is it? I can't find it. Here we go. Uh, to kind of justify what I was saying here about these being a weird pairing is that the, uh, the 6800 XT is usually about 26% faster than an RTX 3070 when you're not enabling ray tracing. So that, that's what I was talking about there. But like I said, I think you could get by with something a lot less powerful um, if you didn't enable ray tracing. That's my guess. That's all we can do. Is this a game you guys would be interested in me benchmarking when it comes out? Seems like it's got some pretty high, uh, high uh, specs, but is this a game that people care about? I honestly don't know. Let me know in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.